I greet you in the words of peace. Shalom, assalamu alaikum, alafia, hotep, and as always, race first. I am President Lion Blyden, President of UNIA Montgomery Burroughs Division number 433, and I welcome you to the Garveyite District. We are here standing in front of our illustrious President General uh, here on the Freedom Wall on Michigan and Ferry, um, just to, to welcome you to our, our little piece of history. So our goal here today is to, to reclaim and uncover lost, stolen, and hidden history about the Buffalo Garveyites of Historical Division number 79. We are currently here at 333 Clinton Street, the very first location where Marcus Garvey came to visit when he came to visit our glorious city here in 1920. Dr. Theodore Kakaza, one of the first four black doctors here in Buffalo, and one of the division presidents of historical division number 79, recalls the meetings uh, and recalls some specific quotes from the meetings, one of which being that the Garvey movement is not a back to Africa movement, but it's a movement to unify us wherever we are around the world to help make Africa strong, to be able to support us abroad. So the goal was not to just have everybody move back to Africa in mass, because as Garvey said, there's some that are no good here and there'll be no good there. So that was never the plan. The goal was to unify our people. And just like the Buffalo American mentioned, there was over a thousand of the most high class black Buffalonians meeting right here in this uh, building in 1920 with Marcus Messiah Garvey. So when we look back on that, Lady President Beatrice Washington was a staff person here at the time. I believe her and Rosa Montgomery had something to do with actually bringing Garvey here after all of them, uh, Cornelius McKnight, uh, Arthur Lewis and the rest heard Garvey speaking in New York City at the historic uh, convention in New York City at Madison Square Garden. They were there. They came back and organized here, and that was the beginnings of the UNIA ACL Buffalo Division number 79. And so we salute them for their work at keeping black history, black nationalism, and black love alive. We are here at the legendary 416 Fire located on Spring and Williams Street. Back in the 1920s, this would have been 268 Spring Street owned by Lady President Rosa Montgomery. Rosa Montgomery was the Lady President of UNIA ACL in the 1920s, and she also was the President of the National Hairdressers Association, as well as the Empire Sports Association. Uh, the Empire Sports Association governed things like cricket and uh, softball in the city. Here in her salon, she would hold card parties and other social events for different black organizations here in the community. Uh, one to be specific was during the National Hairdressers Association run, she would hold uh, beauty pageants and different types of health and ha hair care uh, uh, events here in her establishment. Lady President Rosa, Rosa Montgomery was also a committee woman for the 5th Ward as well as the 8th Ward. She was a member and president of the Martha Montgomery, Ma Martha Washington uh, Republicans Club as well as the first black woman to get involved in politics here in Buffalo, New York. That was a direct quote from Frankie Merriweather Sr. out of the Criterion newspaper. Um, she was involved in the committee to get the first black politicians elected here in the city. The first to run was Howard B. Phillips, another Garveyite. He ran for city supervisor. The next, actually the one who won, was uh, Sherman L. Walker, who was very influential in uh, local politics here in the city of Buffalo. So to her legacy and to Lady, Lady President Rosa Montgomery, we salute you. We say, Ashe, Egungu, one God, one aim, one destiny. And here we are at 185 Walnut Street, the former home of uh, Black Cross nurse Irene Freeland. She was the first Black Cross nurse on record here in Buffalo, New York. She actually ran a nursing school out of her home. Back when the Red Cross didn't hire black nurses, we had to create our own thing. Marcus Garvey, Henrietta Vinton Davis, Amy Garvey, and others created the Black Cross nurses so we would be able to serve in our own communities. Um, here we had over 30 Black Cross nurses who would have gone to the school here in this uh, house and they, they, were, they were all dressed in white, they had their little booklets, they went through a class, it was a six-month six class, they graduated, 
and they had a certificate of graduation. These women went on to create some of the, uh, the, the health services that we see in our city today. So a lot of the history of us taking care of each other, coming together and making sure we have a service for our people, no matter what it is, whether it be monetarily or health wise, it was created and held down here in the city of Buffalo. So we salute Sister Irene Freeland, matron nurse of the Black Cross Nurses. Salute. We are here at 264 Genesee Street. This would have been the first offices of the UNIA ACL after they moved from the churches and the other people's homes that they were meeting in. This was the first venture where they decided they were going to purchase or rent an area so they could have meeting space. And it would have been 264 Genesee Street. You see, this is a major hub. A lot of times we talk about black history in Buffalo, this street specifically right here where Michigan meets, being a, a, a high activity area for black people. One thing that we know for sure is when the Garveyites got together, they had huge parades. So uh, the Criterion and Dr. Ralph Watkins and Dr. Lillian Cerise Williams document extensively huge parades going up and down Michigan, Genesee, Jefferson, etc. So when you see the parades um, and old footage, the black and white footage of the Garvey parades, just imagine that those same parades were happening here or just on a smaller scale. Uh, Buffalo is the Queen City for a reason. Anything that was happening in New York City was happening here uh, at the same level. So Garvey himself would have been marching down this street in uniform with the cars, the parades, the banners, and everything. So when we talk about the black history of Buffalo, we want to include the Garveyites who made the sacrifices to build something on the foundation of the red, black, and the green. So to those ancestors, we say thank you and race first. We are here at 473 Jefferson Avenue. This used to be the location of Dr. Ezekiel Nelson's medical offices. Dr. Ezekiel Nelson and his wife, Alberta Nelson, were very instrumental in the economic development here in the city of Buffalo. They created the Citizens Cooperative Society, which was an investment organization, uh, which helped out a lot of different uh, black businesses around the city getting started. Next, they created the Buffalo Cooperative Economic Society. This uh, organization was the foundation of what we call Black Buffalo today. When we look at the history, when we look back fondly on the history of Jefferson, and Michigan and things like that and all of the different businesses that we all grew up with those businesses came out of the Buffalo Cooperative Economic Society under Dr. Ezekiel Nelson um, he was a staunch Garveyite he came uh, from the rail cars traveling back and forth going to New York City hearing this the message of self-determination and our own everything needing to provide for ourselves economically he came back and created these societies to help do that also, they created the cooperative, uh, the Buffalo Cooperative Economic Food Co-op. That's a lot of words, but here we had the food co-op as well. So, like now, you see it's a store. Back in the day, it had its history as a store as well. When we had our own everything. One other thing here you, at, at the top, you see this was a multi-use building. Not only did we have the co-op downstairs, we did have the medical offices upstairs, where the Black Cross nurses and our doctors got together to be able to serve our people here in our community. So to them, we salute them, and we say race first. Here we are at 485 Michigan Street. This was the location of UNIA Hall. This is when uh, the fourth administration of the UNIA, uh, Buffalo Division Number 79, decided to lease a property for themselves. Uh, what we find about with the UNIA worldwide is everywhere you find a division of the UNIA, they had a location that was either called UNIA Hall or Liberty Hall. Uh, early in the 1920s, we ended up getting this location, I believe it was 1923, um, and we had this location until 1925, until we moved down to uh, uh, Jefferson Street. So here, this location is right in the heart of what we call now the African American Heritage Corridor. You see we're right across the street from the historic Little Harlem Hotel, as well as the Michigan Avenue Baptist Church, which was a, a, a hub for all types of uh, black uh, activity here in the Buffalo community. Also, we're not far away from uh, Vine, Vine Trees Church. So this is another location where uh, black people got together to discuss what we could do for our communities, how we can build, how we can grow, and how we can have a great one destiny. So to all of our ancestors that's done this great work, we appreciate you and we thank you. The actual historical Garveyite district of Buffalo uh, consists of over 30 locations. Some were homes, some were buildings that were either destroyed or repurposed. And so what we tried to do is collect uh, hidden history, lost or stolen history, trying to recompile it so the work of these people would not go uh, forgotten. Uh, if you can imagine 
all of the work that you do or that you put into anything that you feel strongly about and then having it just pushed away uh, and just locked away in history for nobody to ever see again. That's sort of what happened to a lot of these Gavriites. It is our mission with the UNIA ACL, Montgomery Burroughs Division number 433, to restore and reclaim this lost and stolen history. Um, so a lot of the different sites uh, consisted of churches, um, as a matter of fact, let me read a little bit from the pamphlet here. Soon after the August 1920 UNIA ACL convention, in response to the many racial issues they faced and the growing population of black people in Buffalo, a group of prominent black Buffalonians organized to become the founders of this grand association. First president Cornelius McKnight was among this group, along with co-founders Arthur Lewis, Alfred A. Boykin, Dr. Theodore M. Kakaza, Richard and Lillian T. Willis. President McKnight's administration was the first to lead uh, local Division 79. The local division had multiple administrations and meeting locations, such as Lloyd Memorial's Church with Res Reverend S.O.B. Johnson at 20 Potter Street, which is now Nash Street, and St. Philip's Episcopal Church at 166 Goodell Street under Reverend Bennett. Through it all, Historical Division 79 maintained the Liberty Hall at 278 Jefferson Street from 1924 to 1936. So the UNIA Marcus Garvey and the black nationalist history of Buffalo, New York is strong and we intend to keep promoting that through our tours and promoting the Garveyite district of Buffalo. So Brother Doug Ruffin, we thank you and Urban Legacy. Salute.